Now, I'm sure you've all been wondering what's been going on with this. Well, quite honestly, not much. But as of late, I, um, I ran into a situation where when I was making that bearing press, I said to myself, I said, self, after you hacksaw the threaded rod to length, how are you going to deburr it? And I said, well, I could take a file and take two minutes and just file the end, or I could put it into my Emco and I could turn a, a chamfer on it and I could face it down. So a half hour later, I had a two minute part complete, but that gave me the incentive to kind of revisit a couple things that weren't working quite well. And the same day, I managed to get what I was working on working, which was the uh, the G76 threading. I couldn't get it to synchronize with the with the machine. I couldn't get the, the threading cycles to work. So after a quick uh, consultation with Dr. Google, I found some information that led me to having to reverse the encoder scale going into the Mesa card. And after that, everything worked perfectly. So I've been tearing my hair out for no reason whatsoever. So that being said, I then went on a, uh, a conquest to get the machine into a more usable condition, which leads me not so much to this here, but I was taking some test cuts and doing some repeatability tests, turn it off, turn it on, you know, day later, whatever, take some cuts. And, and the thing is just accurate. It, it's holding plenty fine for what I'm going to be doing with it. But also, I, um, I got this, which looks like 20 pounds of potatoes in a five pound sack. But I just did some testing with that and yeah, the drill chuck seems to be okay. I mean, the, the tailstock's not the strongest thing in the world, but what I plan on doing is I need to make 10 millimeter sleeves for this hole here. Uh, so 10 millimeter outside diameter with uh, varying inside diameters for the different boring bars that I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do is, because I don't have live tooling and my poor mill isn't done yet, uh, what I'm going to be doing is, well, right after I sneeze. All right, I'll save you the, I'll save you the, uh, <laughs> the, the beauty of that. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to cut the pieces down the way I would need them to the proper length. I'll, I'll drill and ream the holes. Um, I will part them off. I don't know if I've showed you guys this yet, but. I actually did get a part off tool. Doesn't work the greatest, but if I go MDI and I call that up, that is tool number four, I believe. So T4, F6. So I got this. It's a Shars. It comes with the block and it comes with the blade, it comes with a pack of inserts. I had to get the shank milled down to fit inside of the slot. I mean, it works, but man, the machine does not like it. But trying to uh, trying to find a good cutoff tool for this machine is very, very difficult. But I mean, it, it, it works okay, but you really have to baby it. I mean, the machine's, I mean, it's a tiny little machine, so it's not stout. I think that's my biggest problem. But also, <laughs> I don't want to drag this out too long, but the unveiling. Check this out. I got... Oh, no, look. What's missing? My screen and my keyboard. I got this contraption here. How cool. It mounts to the side of the workbench. I've got adjustable screen position, adjustable keyboard position. I could bring it in, bring it out. I can extend it. I can retract it, angle it the way I want, tilt the keyboard up and down. So that's pretty cool. I, uh, I'm quite happy with that. And now I've got, you know, full access to the touchscreen functionality and it's up and out of the way from the rest of the machine, which I think is snazzy. 
And then in doing that, I also found these rubber grommets that take the place of the plastic plugs that come with the machine for whatever various accessories. I'll do a walk around here. It's the rubber grommet, takes all the cabling. I can run it inside of there. And what I'm doing is I'm running it through the factory gland plate here and then into the cable channels and then to the Raspberry Pi. So you see here, I can clean this up a little bit and got my ethernet cable coming this way. I got the USB cables going that way because they're a little bit shorter. But then they go through the gland, they come out of the grommet and they go up to the monitor. So I can tie these back and whatever, make them pretty. Uh, not a permanent, not a permanent place for this thing, but I do plan on getting a, uh, a wheel around cart for the machine and then I'll mount the monitor stand. So aside from, aside from getting my spindle, um, high and low speeds, adapted properly and some minor tweaks to the to the spindle to to kind of curtail the rpm fluctuation i mean this this thing's pretty much <laughs> pretty much done once i once i reroute the power cable for the pi i can put the back plate on and and that'll be it i do want to i do want to consolidate the amount of plugs that I'm using because I've got I've got a little splitter guy there extension cord with uh, three three plugs in it that I'm using and I would like to come up with an in an inside cabinet solution for those plugs I was thinking five uh, five volt power supply din rail mount to mount to power the Pi and then have some 110 distribution over here, something like that. So that's for future. But for right now, I can, like I said, put the cover on and call it almost done. I mean, projects like this are never complete, but it's uh, usable, it's workable. And now I have to make my boring sleeves. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.